If you're like me at all, there's probably been one point in time where you've asked yourself the question after you've started using Obsidian, how the heck do I organize my notes with all the backlinks and the different folder structures that you can use? There are a lot of different ways that you can approach organizing your notes in Obsidian. Well, today we're going to talk about one specific way, and that is the IMF framework. The IMF framework basically stands for index maps of content and frameworks framework. It's very <laughs> duplicative in that sense. And it was invented or the concept was uh, put together by a guy named Nick Milo over on the uh, Obsidian forums. I'll put a link down below in the description for you to be able to go download his demo database, his demo vault, so you can dive through that. But we're going to do a brief overview of what this system is and how to construct it for your own Obsidian Vault. There are two basic building blocks to the IMF framework. There's an index and there are maps of content. You've seen a few of these in other videos if you've watched of mine uh, covering Obsidian, but basically an index is your starting page. It's the page where you can jump off into different topics that are of interest to you and are relevant to your life and different areas so that you can start basically creating a loose structure or a loose tree of sorts where you can start hanging the different types of notes and different notes that you have in your system. It's there to give context to the notes that you're taking. Next, maps of content are really the next level down. So in the index, you're linking to main index pages for different broad subject areas or areas of interest for yourself. Maps of content go a little bit deeper and they focus on slightly a deeper subject area. It's a little bit narrow than your index topics, but it's still broad enough to contain multiple different notes. And then from there, you can add notes or ideas, concepts into those maps of content. What the IMF framework boils down to is a light organization framework. In my mind, I tend to think of it like a, you know, those um, structures, those trees that you can dry pasta on. It's just some light structure that you can use to make something with. And from there, you can continue to use other fluid systems like Zettelkasten, Evergreen Notes, or even Para right alongside of it. The IMF framework is meant to be a small starting point for building your own personal knowledge management system. And I think it's a fairly easy one to get started with. So let's look into constructing the basics. Okay, here in Obsidian, I have a brand new note. As you can see, it's untitled one up here at the top. There's no content in it whatsoever. This is gonna be our brand new index. So we'll start off by just saying, titling it the index. And one thing this system does is it uses something kind of like the Dewey Decimal System, if you're familiar with that in libraries where books are categorized by a numerical prefix. So the index in the sorts would be 000. It's just an easy numerical identifier for a broad topic area so that you can easily and quickly link back and forth between these indexes and maps of content um, to be able to browse in and out of different trees in the system. So this is my index. You can put whatever you want to here. I mean, you don't have to be very structured with this. There's no right way to do this, but this is just some light ideas and kind of the way that I have structured my own index. Let's not forget up here though, because unlike other note-taking softwares at this point in time, the H1 heading at the top of the page is not translated to the title of the note. So I'm gonna make sure that I title a demo because I already have an index in this database. So then from here, I'm going to craft my areas of interest. And I'm just going to start numbering. I'm just going to go to five today, but you can go as high as you want to. You can even number these like college courses if you like, starting at 100s, 200s, 300s, 400s, whatever is uh, more complex or engaging to you. Whatever works for you in this instance is just to create a brief framework for you to be able to hang your notes on. So this one I'm going to label 
and create a page while I'm doing this. We'll do spirituality. I'll just kind of mirror the system that I have right now. Productivity. Family life. Development. And then business. So these are five big areas that I have deemed important for myself where they're broad enough in my life where they, they have a lot of different concepts and different ideas, different places and, and things that I'm thinking about in them, but they're narrow enough to a singular sort of topic area. So there's lots of breadth to it, but it's still narrow enough to be able to focus on it. If I were to just say life, that would be a little bit too broad. Another thing that I've done is if there's specific particular areas of responsibility to pull that term from getting things done, you can go down here and these might coincide with um, these areas of interest, but the areas of responsibility are, you know, like your workplace or what, um, or your specific, something specific that you are in charge of. It's just another quick jumping off point that you can get into. For today, we're going to skip that. So we've got these areas of interest here. I'm actually gonna do a demo one here on productivity. And you've seen some of this in other videos. So I'm just gonna command click on this to create the note. Okay, so now we're in another index note. So at the top, I'm just gonna create a links header up here. And what all I'm going to do here is I'm gonna use this to link to the index page. It's just an easy way to get back and forth between, so you can click here, you can click here. Very easy to just kind of jump back and forth. So I'm gonna title this one. And then in here, this is where when you have different topic fields that you want to build out, or if you have a specific area that you're researching or thinking about reading books on, this is where you can start to build a map of content. A map of content is just a note that links to other notes, but its title is essentially a keyword that allows you to jump into a specific topic. So in the realm of productivity, What's probably a great topic area that we can look into? Well, one that comes to mind is the getting things done methodology. So I'm just going to title this getting things done MOC. And so that's just an abbreviation for map of content. You can fill this page out. The way I like to think about building out your index pages and maps of content too is have very little information on them to start off with. And then as you continue adding notes, you can build further organization to it. So for example, in this instance, if I have five or six different maps of content, I can start splitting off different heading groups. You know, so I can do like productivity systems, I can do getting things done. So then, or I can do agile results or Another way you could refactor this is to do a productivity systems MOC, which I have one already in my database. And then inside of that map of content, you could also have other maps of content. So say if you have even another topic area deeper where you have multiple notes that you want to organize, you could do, so we'll do could do something like this. You could do getting thing, things done, MOC, agile results, MOC, so on and so forth. So then you could have all sorts of different notes that are tied to getting things done here, agile results. Another thing about these maps of content too at the top is you can put this links header so you can jump right back up to the top level. All right, let's jump back into a map of content here, productivity systems, MOC. Again, you can approach structuring a map of content very similar to how you're uh, going to organize an index page. So as you get more maps of content built out or more notes in here, you can say uh, uh, productivity systems, build healthy habits for getting stuff done. 
This is maybe a note that you have uh, in your system. You can link it here as well. If you use the Zettelkasten method, you can use you know a Zettelkasten identifier on that. Um, you know, I tend to use the more evergreen notes style of note taking, where I try to keep a note as atomic as possible, but um, I also try to title the note with more of a sentence explaining what it is. Thank you, updates. I forgot to put do not disturb on today, apparently, while I'm recording this video. Uh, ultimately, though, with the indexes and maps of content, it's up to you to figure out what organization structure makes sense inside of those notes. But the best place to start is just something simple. Start off with your index all the way at the top here, something basic like this. You can build it out as you go. And then in those different areas of interest that you have, start building out maps of content as you're adding notes and gathering ideas together or areas that you know that you want to dig into. Then once you get into those, start adding notes to them. And as an organization structure starts to develop, then you can start pushing into how do I structure these in a more meaningful way. Again, the whole idea with IMF is to have a light organization framework where you can use other methodologies alongside of it. It's just an easy way to get into and out of your notes and explore them, go in between them. It's really a nice, easy way to get started. Well, that's all for this week's video. If you liked it, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Let me know if you have any questions regarding the IMF framework, Obsidian, note-taking, or any other topics in productivity. I would love to hear them in the comments below. Again, I'm Justin with Effective Remote Work. I'll talk to you in the next video.